Jordan Els here for TalkSport MMA. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by MMA legend Benton Henson. How's it going, mate? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for taking some time. Obviously, we know you're from MMA and everything you've achieved there, but you know now it's a, it's a new era. It's a new sport. So I guess the first question is, uh, why now? Why boxing? Uh, well, boxing was something I've always talked about. I said I wanted to do, and um, now I have the chance. I have the opportunity. They uh, contacted somebody who contacted somebody who contacted my sister-in-law and she contacted me. So I was like, Oh, Hey, I've always talked about wanting to do boxing and now here's my chance. I get the opportunity. So I'm, I'm super excited uh, to get here and to, you know, get a chance to do my thing. And talk to me about the opponent. Chris has been kind of knocking around in this space for a little while, but he's traditionally from the MMA route. He's also um, a teammate of one of your former opponents, Nate Diaz. What, what do you make of him? I think he's a good dude. I think he's a, you know, re respectable, solid, professional athlete. Uh, he takes his MMA career seriously, takes his boxing career seriously. I, I got a respect for him. I respect um, I got respect for Nate. I got respect for his crew, where they come from. I know Avila is a, a man in his own right, though. So I'm, I'm looking at him, looking at what he does, uh, how he does it, and looking to, you know, get my hand raised against him. Yeah, as I said, he's been he's kind of been in this influencer boxing space for a while, and he's got some decent wins on that record. Obviously, Anthony Pettis, who you know very well, and Anthony Taylor as well, and there's a couple of others on there. And it's it. I think he's six and one so far. So, what do you make of him as a as a straight boxer? I think he's good. I think I think he does what he needs to do to get his hand raised. I think he's six and zero. Oh. I think he's still undefeated. Is he undefeated still? I think he's six and zero. Oh. I think he's undefeated still. Um, but you know, I. I I mean, he's doing, he's doing great. You know, I think uh, everyone should be always trying to improve and always trying to get better. I'm sure he's uh, always working to get better, looking, looking to always improve and, and better his game. Everyone always has holes. Uh, I'm sure he's working on making those holes smaller and smaller. Uh, my job is to make sure I capitalize on those holes that he has. Yeah, and, and the interesting part about this card and, and your potential is that you might have two fights in one night. We've got Idris Virgo and Fez Batista in, in the other fight. Um, it's it's something you would have been used to, well, not used to, but familiar with in terms of old school MMA. We had these type of one night tournaments. Was that part of the, the attraction? You know, the kind of this is a bit of a... 100%, 100%. Uh, I've always, like I said... Uh, I've always been interested in doing boxing. I, I want to do, I'm a a true martial artist at heart. I feel like I'm a true martial artist at heart. I want to do, you know, I still do wrestling tournaments. I went and did the Emory Riddle, Emory Riddle Aeronautical University Wrestling Open uh, last winter. Uh, I wanted to go do, uh, I wanted to do uh, Worlds for Jiu-Jitsu, uh, Masters Worlds for Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, it was last weekend in, in Vegas, and because I have the boxing match coming up, I wasn't able to go do that. But next year, I intend on doing going to go do uh, Masters Worlds. Um, so I, I want to do all of that. I want to do Jiu-Jitsu, I want to do boxing, I want to go over to Thailand. I want to have a, a, a Muay, Thai fight, Muay Thai fight in Thailand. I think that'd be amazing, awesome experience to have. I want to do go do a couple of sambo tournaments. I want to. I want to. I'd love to go throw down some Kyokushin karate here. You like combat sports? You gotta look up Kyokushin karate. I like to go do a, a Kyokushin uh, tournament. Um, I, I like doing all of it. I, I love to have fun to go out there. Uh, have a, a true, well-rounded mixed martial arts, um, you know, resume. Say I've I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. I, I've experienced all of it. Um, and it's fun. I, it's able to, I'm able to go out there and, and have a good time. We go, go compete and stuff, you know, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this boxing one and participating in the sweet science of boxing. There's so much in the world of boxing, like for mixed martial arts, there's, you know, of course, boxing, jujitsu, wrestling, uh, judo, like there's the whole world that's involved. Cage wrestling is a whole, a whole nother world, not wrestling, but cage wrestling, learning, learning how to work off the cage, the whole world. Uh, and in that mixed martial arts is the world of boxing. In the world of boxing, there's a, another whole world of boxing. This, this, the footwork, the angles. There's a whole science. There's a sweet science. That's right. So why they they call it that? The science of uh, of boxing and being able to delve into that world. I, I've been super. It's been refreshing. It's been it's been fun to just delve into the world of of boxing and really look after the angles and how they how they play uh, these uh, these feints play play the feint game. How they play the lead hand game. How they play the footwork game. There's a whole world of, of boxing that you can delve that you can dive into. And I've been it's been refreshing. It's been fun for me to dive into that world and to apply it. Before for MMA for mixed martial arts, 
I would pick and choose what would work for, for MMA. Okay, well, I can do this, but I can't do this because I'm going to get kneed in the face. Oh, you got to watch you doing that because I'm going to get kicked in the head. I don't want to get kicked in the head. Uh, so you got to pick and choose what, what applies for mixed martial arts, uh, but will not what will not apply. So going over to uh, to boxing now, it's really fun. Uh, it's really refreshing too be able to to go into all that i rolled a couple of times my head was way down low i saw their their knee right here i was like oh i could have done that and never make i got knee in the face so it's fun it's cool it's uh it's uh pretty pretty different for me i'm, I'm really uh, excited for these uh this uh, you know the sweet science of boxing getting into it yeah that that's just speaking to you now this the one thing that's kind of exuding off you is just like excitement and enjoyment of of the task ahead of yeah is that what you're looking for now moving forward you know you've come to the end of your mma career you've been a champion you've done all that type of stuff is it now just about having fun uh for sure having fun uh but still always 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 trying to be the best in the world uh i i officially retire from mixed martial arts i'll probably never do mixed martial arts again um now it's my wife's turn to train. It's my wife's turn to to commit herself, train, you know, seven hours a day. Uh, be able part of training is learning how to relax, learning to you need to take time this time off. These two hours is not for you to, to do house chores, it's not for you to do dishes, it's not for you to vacuum. These two hours are set for you to lay down, sit on your butt. This recovery time is just as important as your time training. So now it's her time to to train full time, to train like a professional athlete. And uh, it's by trying to go pick up the kids from school. Go take them to chess practice. Go take them to you know to baseball practice. They, they have flag football coming up. Go take them to flag football practice. Uh, so it's my turn to do all that. In the meantime, if I happen to get these one offs, misfits boxing, uh, karate combat, uh, going to go do uh, Polaris, going to go do uh, jujitsu or something like that, I'm able to you know take a little bit of time, take a couple extra couple of weeks, maybe a month or so to train and get ready for that. Uh, but I, I don't train seven days a week anymore. Now it's my wife's turn to train seven days a week. If I happen to have something fun coming up, and I'll take a, maybe a month or so to go train and have some fun and get ready for for that event. Um, but now it's her turn to train full time seven days a week. Uh, my time to train is uh, if I have get have a fun event to come up for to get excited about. I'll train for about a month or so and then go have some fun. Millions and and this influence of boxing scene, it's it can be like a quite a, a money maker. It can be a career in itself, a post fight career for yourself. Have you thought about the potential fights in the future? There's a lot of big names knocking about, and you, and you go out and make a statement here. It it kind of sets you up for a, an, an even bigger fight. Yeah, I, I would be interested in that. You know, um, the whole uh, social media aspect mixed with the uh, professional sports i think misfits doing a good job I, I like how misfits is bringing the social media aspect into the actual real world the real professional sports professional athlete uh some some uh events some some promotions tried it before but it was too spoofy too much of a joke the 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 social media people were were didn't take it seriously if you don't take it seriously like i i couldn't do that and then you're gonna get hurt you uh, go out there and you don't take boxing seriously. You go out there, you can get punched in the lips, you can get hurt, you know, you, you can get some serious brain damage. Uh, so I think Misfits does a, a great job of uh, bringing some of these social media people over, but they have to take it seriously. If they take it as a joke, I can't be a part of that. I said, it's just a spoof, a gaff, and then people laughing. Like, I mean, that's cool. That, that's their gig. I'm not against it. Good for you, but not something I would, I would necessarily uh, want to be a part of. But being a part of something that where they're taking, uh, you know, all the eyeballs, all the eyeballs from social media, 100 million people, yada, yada, and bring them over to a true professional boxing, professional mixed martial arts, professional, just the professional world. Where people take it seriously. I love that. I think it's great. I'm a big fan. I'm a big proponent of martial arts. Uh, boxing is one of the world's oldest martial arts. People don't think of boxing as a traditional martial arts. Boxing is one of the first ever traditional martial arts. Boxing and wrestling. That's it. That's your traditional martial arts. Um so the misfits bringing people into the world of professional martial arts, I love that. I think I think it's great. Um, it's getting people to to treat to respect um, boxing the way they should, and, and not just take it as a joke. I, I I'm a, I'm all I'm all for that. I love to yeah maybe continue being a part of it. I'm I'm down for that and go beat up some guys. I've got to ask you about Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, because I think there is quite a lot of debate about that fight. It makes money. It obviously makes sense from that type of thing. But due to like the 31 year age gap, people are saying it doesn't make sense. It's kind of a spoof. What, what do you think? Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of a, how old is Mike Tyson? 58. 
I'm not a fan of a f- how old's the, the other guy? Uh, what's twenty seven. Uh, Jake Paul, twenty seven. I think he is. I'm not a fan of a fifty eight year old man taking on a twenty seven year old man. Almost in no sport at all will a fifty eight year old man stand a chance against a twenty seven year old man in a one on one combat sport. Uh, it would be really hard unless the you know twenty eight year old, twenty seven year old is uh, a pretty low level, and then the fifty eight year old is you know still. Uh, you know, high level of actively competing, actively doing stuff. If you haven't fought in 20 years and then you're 58, like, uh, might be a little bit harder, might be a little bit tougher. Uh, so I'm not a fan of that. I think it is a big money maker. I think, uh, there might be no other, literally no other reason in the world to do that fight other than to make money. If you say there is another reason to do that fight, okay, do it for free. Go put it on YouTube. Your, your, your YouTube star, sure, no problem. Go do it for free, put it on YouTube for free and, and still have that fight. Then tell me, then, then tell me all other stuff worth it it's not just about the money no you're lying your butt off it's, it's all about the money which is good which is cool all the respect to people doing whatever it is they want to do to, to make their money no disrespect for that people gotta pay their bills and stuff you know whatever people gotta make money so if that's what you want to do to make money no problem i just that uh, i'm not the biggest fan of it i don't have a whole lot of respect for it but who cares it's, it's my own personal opinion who cares what my opinion is Absolutely, and obviously we are talked about MMA. So I just want to ask you a couple of MMA questions before I let you go. You've had a little while to kind of reflect on your career after retirement. I'm just curious, and I'm always curious when I speak to people like yourself, does any moments pop up in terms of, you know, that was, you know, kind of my best moment. That's the one I look back on, and that was, you know, that was the tip top. No, I don't think I've ever, I, uh, I don't think I've ever looked at my career like that, like since, since being retired. I have... Since I retired, I have had the chance to look back on my career. During my career, I was too hyper-focused. I was too uh, one-dimensional, hyper-focused, just on getting better, on improving. The day after fight, I was already looking forward to, like, I just won a world title, yada, yada, defending my belt. Uh, the next day, you're already looking forward towards the next opponent on getting better. Like, oh, man, that fight, I got hit with four leg kicks. I got to work on those leg kicks. I got to work and check the leg kicks. I was already hyper-focused on improving and getting better uh, the day after a fight, you know? Um for uh um after i retired for looking backwards at it i have been had a chance to look at more things to see what i experienced uh going over to saitama arena being a main event for saitama arena historic you know historic uh, venue going over to different countries being able to think about all the countries i visited i've been to been to like 40 different countries or so so being able to look back and reflect on that as far as looking back at the actual fights uh, not so much like looking back on my experiences, being able to bring my wife out to certain places, being able to enjoy time with my with my team, with my with my uh, teams out there uh, wherever we were for for the fight week. That was always super fun time. Um, being able to enjoy my my teammates and enjoy their camaraderie. I, I love that. I love the camaraderie. I love the team camaraderie that that my gym has. Um, but actual like fights, looking back to see like what fight I had that looked good or whatever. I have never done that. And just finally, um, over the weekend we had Usman Namagamedov in action. Uh, Khabib got on the mic and said he is he's the future of MMA. And I'm just curious for someone who was in that light division and, and shared the the cage with him. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, it'd be hard to to not share their statement with him. Usman defended his belt against uh, Shabli, who's a uh you know game opponent. So you know Usman did a great job. Um, would I would I um. Would I second that statement? Would I would I uh, back it up? You know, I probably wouldn't use those exact words, but man, Usman's great. He, he freaking knocked me out in the first round. You know, I already know he, he submitted me. We're naked. He submitted me in the first round. Uh, so you know, uh, hats off to him. I got a ton of respect for him. A ton of respect for his uh, his training camp for his gym. Uh, Usman is the man. Um, I think I I already have. Two, three cats. I got some little brothers in the gym already who are giving a run, run for his money. I got, I got some, I got some young killers at my gym who are, uh, who are raring to go and give them another year, give them another, another two years. They're gonna, they're gonna get revenge for me. Brilliant! Can't wait to see them come up through the ranks, and also can't wait to watch your fight, um, and whatever you've got going in the future. So just thanks for your time today, mate, and, and good luck with everything. Uh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time.